Hello, beautiful souls, and welcome back to this Astrology, Human Design, and Jinkies channel with me here again today, Tan. And today we're going to be talking about Gene Key 34 and Human Design Gate 34, which is the zodiac sign of Sagittarius. But before we get started today, if you are interested in getting a reading, then please head over to my website, tanastrology.com. Whether you're interested in astrology, human design, or Gene Keys reading, me and my team have a variety of different services available there for you guys. You can choose whatever feels right for you, and we'd be happy to be your guides on this self-discovery journey. All right, so we're going to talk about Gene Key 34 today. So if you have this Gene Key in your chart or in your human design body graph, then comment below and let us know what your experiences have been. So as usual, we're going to begin looking at this Gene Key by doing an overview of this particular archetype. So Gene Key 34 moves from the shadow of force to the gift of strength and the city of majesty, the beauty of the beast. And it spans the zodiac sign of Sagittarius from 0, 0, 007 degrees of Sagittarius to 545 degrees of Sagittarius. The dream arc vision key bird is the emu. The life key animal is the bear. And the fear key underworld shadow frequency is the lizard. In the codon ring, this gene key is located in the ring of destiny. And it's associated with the amino acid asparagine. I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly. In the 64 aging hexagram, this gene key is thunder over heaven, great power, awakening the creative essence in alignment with divine timing. Ooh, how powerful is that? The programming partner of this archetype is gene key 20 and human design gate 20, and that's the zodiac sign of Gemini, which sits at the opposite point of the zodiac wheel. So I just made a video on that a few days ago. I highly recommend that you check it out as well so you can understand how the programming partner offers a balancing complementary opposite energy to your energy. In human design, this gate is located in the sacral and it forms three channel, channel 2034, of charisma channel 3457 the channel of power and channel 1034 the channel of conviction so as with all of the gene keys videos we want to begin by looking at the bird associated with this archetype because all of these archetypes can be linked to an archetype in nature and here we're looking at birds so when it comes to the bird of Jinky 34, this is the emu. The emu is considered to be the second largest bird in the world, the largest of course being the ostrich. The emu can be a symbol of activity, movement, energy, and survival instincts. Although the emu is a flightless bird, but it has amazingly strong legs and can run very fast. And this is actually a symbol of being able to focus on what we can do and what we're capable of and excel at that rather than doing what we can't and forcing the things that we can't do to happen. With its powerful legs, the emu can actually leap up to about 2.1 meters off of the ground without having any wings. The mating process of the emu is also a little bit odd and different from other birds because it's the females that would fight for the female partner. They can fight for up to five hours, just kind of kicking at each other. In the bird kingdom, you it's usually the male that fights for the female or tries to get attention from the female. But with the emu, it's different. It's the reverse. The emu bird can also go for weeks without food or water. Sometimes can go for months without food or water. They can kind of stockpile and reserve their energy very effectively. And they use this specifically, especially when their males are incubating the eggs and raising their chicks. So the females would be the one to lay eggs, but then it would be the males that actually incubate the eggs while the females run off and find a new mate. So I think that pretty much gives us a lot of a good idea about this emu nature and emu archetype. So if you have this jinky or human design gate somewhere in your body graph, some of the traits that you might have within you is that you are actually very good when it comes to your survival instincts. You are somebody who is always having to be on the move. You have a lot of physical energy to do stuff, to get stuff going. And you're very physical by nature and you probably need some kind of sports to give you an outlet there. And you can achieve 
amazing things because you have an abundance of energy that never gets filled up, that never gets used up, sorry. But of course, you can also have the negative end of things, which is that you can kind of maybe burn out or even force your energy to do something when you don't actually have the physical energy to do it, or you might force other people along the way. But so let's dive a little bit deeper into the shadow energy of this archetype, which is called force. So Richard Rudd associates Gene Key 34 with the basic idea of survival of the fittest, which represents the notion of human power since the ancient times, right? If you could survive through the various different changes through survival of the fittest, then you would be considered powerful. This is nature. This is coming from the ancient times. In the shadow of force, of course, with the 34th shadow, this is somebody that is going to force things to happen in their life. There can be a very intense self-absorption with this archetype that when applied to the modern human being can lead to aggressiveness and brute force without awareness. So the without awareness is also an important part here because if we think about how we have this gene within our nature for survival of the fittest, it's almost instinctual, right? It's almost like when you have to survive, you don't have to be aware that you have to survive, you just have to survive. But if we use this in our relationships, in our career, in our health, in our in various different areas of our life, without that awareness, what it can end up doing is that it can seem aggressive, but nobody can kind of talk you out of it. You cannot be influenced at all by anyone outside of yourself because the moment somebody tells you hey you're acting a bit aggressive you're like huh i don't know what's going on i don't i don't think so because you're not even aware of it i hope that's kind of making sense there is no awareness here the 34th shadow was absolutely necessary in the past when we were in the survival stage of evolution and it has it is what has led our species as human beings to still remain in the world today and allows our body to outwit other species but yet in today's modern world, this 34th shadow of force is considered to be one of the most destructive shadows that gives ferocious competitive power that is one of the greatest threats to our survival now as a species. So it's the shadow that can actually cause us as a species to be extinguished. But not just our species, but it is actually a shadow that is a threat to the entire planet. Because it, with, with this unawareness that exists within it comes a potential for inhumaneness. There might be awareness that creeps in after that aggressive activity has happened, that competitiveness has happened, but the damage has already been done. Because during the activity, it is just pure mechanism, pure mechanized absorption. And this stems also from the idea of trying, you know, trying too hard. Trying implies that you are forcing something to go a certain way when it doesn't naturally want to go or can go in that direction. When you have the shadow of force, you seem to be moving blindly, aggressively in a particular single-minded direction that you have set out and any type of guidance or help or support is immediately falls on deaf ears so if you also have if you have this gene key 34 and you also have gene key 43 the shadow of deafness somewhere in your chart and you are in your shadow frequency in your life we have force and deafness coming together so you would be some of the most stubborn people in the world um, and you won't even recognize or realize that you are stubborn. You become totally lost in what is moving through you, even though it may be harmful to yourself and to others. If you have this archetype, don't think that your energy is just harmful to yourself. It goes both ways. It's harmful to yourself and others because you are part of others. We are part of the collective. The moment you do harm yourself, you harm others in some ways as well. When you harm others in some ways, you're harming yourself in some ways. When you're in the shadow of force, you can consistently feel this frustration coming from other people. You feel like, why are other people resisting you or frustrated with you? because you infuriate them. They cannot understand how you can be so blind to outside influence that they feel frustrated. So let me give you an example of this. So for example, let's say you're going hiking 
okay, with somebody who has this archetype. And, you know, you go as a group and you want to make it to the summit, right? And, you know, this archetype is going to be like, I'm going to make it to the summit and no matter what, I am not giving up. I don't care if I break a leg, I'm going to get there, right? There may be some other people in the group who are like, I can't make it for whatever reason. I'm just like, I'm going to fall back. I'm not going to make it to the summit. This archetype is either going to be the one to say, what? You're not going to go to the summit. You're a loser. You're giving up. You're a loser. And if somebody is watching the situation and they come up to the 34 and they say, hey, you're being rude. You shouldn't call this person a loser. They just can't make it. You know, if you want to make it to the summit, go ahead. The 34 person is going to be like, why are you being so rude to me? They didn't even realize what a bully they were. They didn't even realize how they were stampeding on other people's emotions or, or fears or path or willpower <laughs> by the brutality of themselves. So they think, why are people resisting me or why are people frustrated with me? I didn't do anything when actually you kind of did, but you're not going to have that awareness. But if you're watching and you're like, oh, I noticed this then you probably stepped into the gift frequency, which is the gift of strength, and you realize that you have this energy within you. If you are continuously trying to force something to happen in your life, you will continually meet resistance from others. And of course, this was just an example that I gave. It was just a, you know, a one-time thing. This can be applied to relationships, into your career, like a variety of different things in your life where you just keep pushing and pushing something that it's not meant to be. It's not natural. It's not in alignment. It's not for you. And you meet all of this frustration along the way, but yet you're going to keep doing it. And you're like, oh my God, I'm frustrated by everything around me, but I'm going to keep going. But I'm so frustrated by everything around me, but I'm going to keep going. And you end up burning out or you end up damaging your health. And if you're in the shadow, you don't even realize that this is happening. With this gene key, it's not about changing yourself because this is happening, but it's about choosing the right activity and doing it at the right time. That's the key here. So if you're a parent and you're watching this and you have a child who has Jinky 34 and as they're growing up, they would need a lot of space and freedom as well as proper boundaries. So they need both of these things to be in balance and communicated to them as they're growing up. Force the shadow of force is actually rooted in your mind. But the power that you actually have within you is rooted in your belly and in the sacral. That's the difference here. So this sacral, this belly center, this power that you have there, it's grounded, it's natural, and it is universally connected to all of life. It flows from the umbilical cord of your being. That is power. Force happens when you don't trust in the power of your awareness center, which in this case is the sacral for you. And you go back to the mind and you think to yourself, because I've committed to something, I have to keep plowing on through when it's not really in alignment with your sacral. So, of course, we can have the repressive nature of this archetype as well. And if you have this archetype, you're going to have both the repressive and the reactive. You don't just have one without the other. They're going to switch back and forth in your life. And when you're in the repressive nature, you are somebody that is hiding from your own power because you're afraid. You're afraid of yourself. You put yourself down and you accept other people as an authority over you. You are a slave to other people's principles and you let other people walk all over you. And usually this happens because of a difficult childhood. Something has happened in your childhood where your power was held back or your power was told to be held back, to be held back. And so as an adult, you continue this habit, this comfort zone. So if you're in the repressive shadow here, at some point in your life, you have to free yourself from these situations and people in your life so that you can find yourself again and your true strength will return. When you're in the reactive shadow, this is of course somebody who is like a bully or you just have a bossy nature about you and you don't even realize that you have it. But in like the example that I told you with regards to the hike, you just see the response of others around you. You aren't aware that you're being bullyish and you become angry when when other people are challenging you 
what you need to be able to do if you're in the reactive shadow here, you need to be able to find a healthy outlet or activity that you can channel your anger rather than constantly aggravating others with it. All right, let's see how we can turn the shadow of force into the gift of strength and what the gift of strength looks like. So the gift of strength has a lot of primal power, but they, but you use your primal power, your raw primal power in the right activities with the right people and in the right timing. And as a result, this aligned creative life force will always attract the attention of others. The real definition of strength is the ability to act in harmony with natural forces. Strength just simply and effortlessly flows out of you. You become at one with the activity that you are engaged in. Effortlessness doesn't mean that you don't put in effort, but effortlessness means that you don't meet resistance. So, you know that you're in the gift of strength in your life when you no longer feel resistance coming in in some ways. And you will be able to draw positive attention to yourself and you will notice that there's a lot of people paying attention to you and what you're doing. You become the heroes and the heroines of people's lives and in the world. And people who are heroes, who have committed acts of heroic acts with Gene Key 34, they do do it without awareness. They are just driven purely by the need to use their energy to do something good, right? But they're not even aware that they're doing that. They're purely running on instinct. They're not using their instincts and their primal power to bully others. Instead, they're using it to do something good for others. And even when you are praised, you know, when you have the gift of strength within you, you may even feel a little bit uncomfortable because you're like, oh, I didn't uh, realize what I was doing. Um, thank you for the praise there. So being such a physical archetype, the 34th gene key is very much related to needing to be involved with some kinds of sports or maybe it's dance or movement. But it's not so much about team sports because it is such an individual energy. This is more about individual sports, individual movement, individual dance. And when you're in the gift of strength, the way that you move is very hypnotic has a hypnotic quality to it and it evokes admiration from others if you've seen bruce lee so i think bruce lee has um jinky 34 somewhere maybe it's his son but if you've seen the way that bruce lee moves it's very hypnotic and it it garners admiration from people it shows your raw power your individual power that is beyond the norm we could even say all right, so let's look at the city of majesty and what that really means. So like I mentioned with all my Jinky videos, I don't want to spend too much time talking about the city because the city dawns upon you when you are playing out the gift frequency consistently throughout your life. The city is an enlightened state of being. It's just pure beingness that will dawn upon you. So the city of majesty is what is called awareness in motion. Richard Rudd says that the city of majesty is like the naked ape or Adam and Eve. It is divine energy constantly moving through human form, just like the emu. And the fact that it doesn't have any wings, but darn it can jump. <laughs> and it is just so primal and so raw. When you watch the people of Jinky 34 move, it's very bewitching to the eye. And to have a very healthy um, relationship to movement and to sports and to physical activity is what we can see with Jinky 34 and the City of Majesty. For examples, when you watch the movements of Tai Chi or the asanas of yoga, these are an embodiment, um, an expression of Jinky 34's City of Majesty. Because these sacred movements and dance, they contain the codes of higher consciousness and the highest forms of martial arts lies in the notion of the fact that true strength lies in emptiness. So I highly recommend that you maybe read up on the work of Bruce Lee. Now I do admire Bruce Lee for many many reasons. I also have some um, other opinions about him and his life as well. 
he's human, you know. So he, although he is admirable, he does have some traits and some things in his life that's not so admirable as well. But there are many things about Bruce Lee that is admirable in the way that he shares his philosophy of martial arts. It's very much this Gene Key Thirty Four, the the gift of strength, the city of majesty at play. Because this、um, archetype is so much related to the divine being in movement in the present moment, Tibetan art, sand art, Tibetan sand art is a really good metaphor for this. Where you could spend months.、Um, Creating a picture from sand, but then once it's done, you create mandalas from sand. But once it's done, you leave it out in the wind to be blown away in the wind, as a symbol that art itself is in the present moment when you are doing it, when you are creating it. The city of majesty is about surrendering your body and the vibration of its movements completely. When all fear is purged from your system. The pure awareness of your body's intelligence is revealed. The entirety, the whole universe, begins to move through you. This is the city of majesty. And last but not least, Richard Rudd does end this chapter by talking about water, and the great Lao Tzu, and also Bruce Lee with regards to the teachings of water being the most majestic and strongest of all the elements, because water is both flexible, yet can carve. Its way through stone, so I'll just end this video off by reading that particular, by reading out the words of the great Lao Tzu. If you don't have the Jinkies book, if you have it, you can also find it yourself in the Jinkies book there. So the saying goes, "The very softest thing of all can ride like a galloping horse through the hardest of things, like water, like water penetrating rock, and so the invisible enters in." That is why I know it is wise to act by doing nothing, and how few, how very few, understand this. That is Gene Key Thirty Four: The Strength and the Majesty of Water. So that's it for the transmission today. If you guys have this, or have this archetype, then comment below and share with us what your experiences have been. And if you don't have it but you resonate, then also comment below and share with us what your experiences are. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. If you haven't, if you already subscribed, then thank you very much, beautiful souls, for coming along on this series. I really, really appreciate it from the deepest part of my heart. And and of course, don't forget to check out your programming partner as well, which is Jinky Twenty and Human Design Gate Twenty, the archetype of Gemini, that can offer a really good balancing, complementary, opposite point to this fierce energy that you have with Jinky Thirty Four. And that's it, beautiful souls. Sending you lots of strength and majesty today.